Nearly every great developer that I ever worked with have one thing in common. They all have hobby projects. They all have something to tinker with, experiment, where they gather up new ideas, try out new ideas, and gather up new experiences outside of the working environment. And here are four reasons why I think it's really important that if you want to become a great developer or if you want to hire a great developer, you should either have a hobby project or you should look for developers who have hobby projects. All right, so the first thing that you, a hobby project gives you is it's a great arena to test out a new idea. Um, because when you want to try out new things, uh, you sort of, if you want to do it in the product that you're working in with the team at work, you sort of need to ask permission. With a hobby project, you don't need to ask permission. And if you're anything like me, um, an idea can sort of get stuck in your head and sort of needs to come out. Otherwise, it's almost like this physical pain that I, I just need to get this idea out in my head, see what it looks like and, and try it out. So for example, on my GitHub repository, you can find my ClickMonkey uh, Selenium randomized tester that will connect to any website, potentially log in, and then just start clicking random stuff and submitting random inputs into all of your forms, which is a great way to stress test your website to see if, if there are any bugs that you unintentionally will run into or they haven't thought of. Another uh, really, really useful uh, tool that I use so much is the clay generator that's also on my GitHub repository. It's open source and it's the code generator that we use at Flavy. And we saved so much time with having a strict architectural setup with the help of our model driven code generator. And we're using the one that's on my GitHub that's been on GitHub for several years now. Hi, I'm Morten Nielsen. I'm a serial startup CTO with over 20 years of experience. I, on my channel, I talk about software development and sort of building software development teams and personal development or leadership uh, questions, if you will. Uh, if you like it, please like, subscribe, and uh, or share my content if you think it's useful for someone else. I have this tick in my head that if I find myself with a negative opinion about a piece of software, a way of working with software, a certain programming language, if I have no experience of it, I sort of want to make sure that I have my ducks in a row or like my arguments are correct. So I sort of feel the need to do software implementations to sort of test out the ideas so I, I can actually speak from a place of knowledge instead of, of just making assumptions about what it is. So my prime example of that is one of my good friends, Henrik. He's currently the CTO of a Minimus, uh, company called Minimus that work with vintage clothing and AI. And our first interaction was basically uh, an argument over an architectural pattern and that I later came home, wrote a piece of hobby project uh, code that I worked on for at least six months. And eventually the ideas that I had came back to Henrik and he started adopting some of the, the things that I uh, did. And, and we had this back and forth. And that architectural pattern is actually in use in Flavy software now, what, 10 years later. And this kind of input and like an analysis is only available if you can go out and actually try out new things. And a hobby project is a great way for you to try out new things, explore new ideas, see if you like a programming language, see if a certain architectural pattern actually works well or not, or in what context you can use them. So if you are at all familiar with the theories of having a growth mindset by uh, Carol Dweck, you'd know that in order for you to sort of grow and, and work with the resilience, you sort of need to fail and get the feedback. And the, the effort put in is the important thing to reward. You're, you're building up grit, you're building up uh, resilience towards failure. However, as you become a better developer and working with this failure, you would perhaps prefer to fail in a hobby project compared to failing at work. And especially if you're testing out new things, you're doing experiments, you're learning new things, it might be a good idea to do that in an environment where you have less pressure, but you can still push yourself and see how, how you can adopt and, and change things in that particular thing that you're trying out. 
a hobby project is a great place for you to explore and sort of push the limits of what you're capable of and be a little bit uncomfortable. So a hobby project is really a safe place to fail. And especially if you're using Git, you can always go back. Source control is a great uh, safety network if you want to try out stuff uh, and like experimentally. But on a in a hobby project, you can actually do it in a bigger scenario. So if you read the work with by Nazim Taleb about anti-fragility and you combine the two ideas of grit and anti-fragility, you know that if you pressure your brain and you put stress on it, then that is where your brain grows and it's where you, you learn new things. You need to be outside your intellectual comfort zone, if you will. So the theory between anti-fragility is that the opposite of fragility is not robustness. Robustness, when it breaks, it breaks catastrophically. Anti-fragility is more like a biological system where you, if you put it under stress, you will create a stronger system. This works for your brain, this works for neuroplasticity, and this makes it really, really important to sort of push yourself and be outside your intellectual comfort zone. So applying the ideas behind building grit and building an anti-fragility, you, you, you can sort of combine this and see that if you want to become a better software developer, you need to be outside of your intellectual comfort zone. You need to sort of work in areas where you're uncomfortable. If you're not good at uh, databases, then do a hobby project heavily that heavily relies on databases. If you're not comfortable with front-end development work, do a, a hobby project that has front-end work and, and try to sort of push yourself and create a better fr uh, front-end experience than what you, you do. And doing this in a hobby project setting is a really great way for you to sort of push, but it's not in a critical system that a lot of users potentially, or well, if, if you have a lot of system, uh, users in your uh, hobby project, kudos to you. But uh, it's a great way for you to try out things, see if they work, push yourself a little bit. So a hobby project is a really great place for you to try out things and sort of be on that limit because it's a safe environment for you to fail in and learn and be comfortable with that and go back and try other ideas and figure out how to solve problems in new and, and creative ways. Another great benefit with hobby projects is that they are, a, they are a safe place to discuss and get feedback on code. You can show it to friends, you can show it to coworkers, you can discuss code with people outside your company because it doesn't have anything with your company to do. Like you're not, you don't need to sign an NDA or whatever which creates a great place for you to show your work and get feedback. Because as much as we sometimes love sitting in our, at our desks tinkering uh, late at night with our hobby projects, getting feedback is another great way for you to grow as a developer. Because otherwise you have to figure out all the different ways of solving problems yourself. Ask questions, get feedback. So I made this, what do you think about it? and take that feedback as constructive ways to improve yourself and your work. Another great thing with having your hobby project as something you can show up uh, off is that it's great during like early stage coding interviews. If it's open source on GitHub, perfect. Then you show, you show, you're showing off your code skills uh, early in the cycle. Maybe you're not going to have as much testing done because they can see your previous work. You can also talk about the hobby project and it's a way for you to sort of segue into different roles depending on where you focus the effort in your hobby project and where you focus the discussion during the interview. So because there's a hobby project inherently does not necessarily have any pressure on you to complete anything unless you make commitments to people in different directions, you have customers paying for it or whatever your goal for your hobby project is. It's a great way to keep coding fun because admittedly, when we're working in team set settings and when we're getting paid to write code, eventually we will have to put a lot of effort into areas of software development that we are not the most enthusiastic about. So you will, you are getting paid to write code and sometimes you can have weeks of writing code that you don't actually feel is the most fun and creative uh, way for you to work with. Getting an outlet for fun and creative work and like where you have complete autonomy of what you want to do 
it, you can have that in a hobby project and you can keep your skills warm, you can explore and have fun with your hobby project. And this is so important because what really shines through in a job interview when you're interviewing for software development jobs is passion about software development. I would take a passionate software developer over unpassionate software developer any day. That passionate software developer goes home and writes code for two or three hours extra every day. And if you compound that over years, that's an excellent developer in the making if it's an early career or it's a great developer if they've already been doing that for multiple years. So please, if you watch this and you don't have a hobby project, but you really want to be a great software developer one day, get a hobby project, find something that you're passionate about, write code, experiment how you would solve it, how you set up the systems. This will make you so much more valuable for any team that you join. So if you already have a hobby project, please leave a link to it or a description of it as a comment in the video below because uh, showing off your hobby project, talking about it can actually be a really good way to network, have fun, and it's a great way to share experiences of what it is to work in different architectures and how to solve problems in different and creative ways. If you don't have a hobby project right now, start one. It doesn't have to change the world, doesn't have to make you rich, it doesn't have to be big. It just needs to be something that you enjoy coding on, that you like tinkering on, and that you can show other people potentially, depending on what you want to do with it. Start one, and if you have one, leave a comment tell, describing your project, maybe a link to it, that would be great. We can all see what we're all working on. Okay, bye.